Hello, in this problem we're going to solve this nonlinear system of equations. So we have x cubed minus y equals 2x and y minus 5x equals negative 6. So to do this, uh, I am thinking that one way is to use substitution. So we're going to take the second equation, so y minus 5x equals negative 6. And we're going to solve it for y and plug it into the first equation. I think that will be a good strategy. So let's go ahead and write it down again and then add 5x to both sides to solve for y. So this gives us y equals 5x minus 6. So 5x minus 6. All right, so now we're going to plug this into the first equation. So plug into, I'm going to give these names, 1 and 2. Plug into 1. And so when we do that, we get x cubed, and then minus, and then y. But y is all of this here. So it's two terms. So it's really important to put it in parentheses. So 5x minus 6, and that's equal to 2x. Very nice. Okay, let's go ahead and distribute. Uh, there's really an invisible negative 1 here. So this is x cubed minus negative 1 times 5x is minus 5x. Negative 1 times negative 6 is a positive 6, and this is equal to 2x. Let's go ahead and subtract 2x. So minus 2x, minus 2x. So we have x cubed minus 7x plus 6, and that's equal to 0. All right, so now we have to <laughs> factor this somehow. So I am not seeing a very easy way to factor this uh, in my mind. Uh, maybe, actually maybe, maybe we can do this. I'm thinking this. Let's, this is something that might not work, but I'm just thinking it might work. So let's just think about it. I don't know if it'll work. So two numbers that multiply to six. Uh, no, this is not going to work. <laughs> That's not going to work because of the middle term. Scratch all that. So let's go ahead and try something else. Um, let's try the rational roots theorem. But before we do, Let's just see if one is a solution to this. So let's check one. And I say that because a lot of times uh, in these problems, um, they're kind of like rigged, like usually one works. So let's see, one cubed minus seven times one plus six equals zero. So that's one minus seven plus six equals zero. So negative six plus six equals zero. So one is a solution. So because 1 is a solution, so x equals 1 is a solution to this equation, um, that means that when we divide by x minus 1, the remainder is 0. So let's go ahead and divide by x minus 1 using synthetic division, and we'll be able to fully factor this after that. So when you're dividing by x minus 1 with synthetic division, you start by writing down the 1 like this, and then you write down the coefficients of your polynomial. So the first coefficient is 1. The second coefficient is 0. There's really a 0x squared here. It's invisible. It's plus 0x squared. So 0. The next one is negative 7. And the next one is 6. And then you draw a line. Okay, so 1, 0, negative 7, and 6. And in the synthetic division process, the very first step is to bring down the 1. So you bring it down. And 1 times 1 is 1. You add, you get 1. 1 times 1 is 1. You add, you get negative 7, uh, negative 6, <laughs> six, 6, negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. You add, you get 0. And we know that it should be 0 because 1 is a solution. So now uh, we can factor this fully. Let me write it again. x cubed minus 7x plus 6. So this is equal to, well, we know that 1 is a solution, so x minus 1 is a factor. And then it's times, and then this gives us the other factor here. So you want to start at 1 less. Because this was a cubic, you want to start at uh, 
x squared. So it's 1 times x squared plus 1 times x minus 6. And again, we were setting this equal to 0, right? That's the whole point was trying to solve this cubic equation. Um, I think this will factor some more. So this is x minus 1, x, x. Let's see. Two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to 1. So I think 3 and 2. And let's make the negative there on the 2 because 3x plus negative 2x gives us x. So the inner and the outer always give you the middle term. x times x is x squared. That part's easy. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. No problem. But the middle term it's going to be the inner, which is 3x, and the outer, which is negative 2x. And when you add those, you get x. So we get three different x values here. We get 1, negative 3, and 2. But those aren't solutions, right? Those aren't solutions to the problem. They're solutions to the equation. Um, this problem is a system of, of nonlinear equations. So basically now we have to find the y value. So we can plug it into either of these. Let's go ahead and plug it into this one to find the corresponding y values. So y equals 5x minus 6. I'm going to come down here and write that. So y equals 5x minus 6. So this is what we're going to use. And let's go ahead and plug numbers in to get the y coordinates. So when x is 1, we have y equals 5 times 1 minus 6. So 5 minus 6, so negative 1. So when x is 1, y is negative 1. So our first solution is the ordered pair negative, uh, 1 comma negative 1. When x is negative 3, we get y equals 5 times negative 3 minus 6. So that's going to be negative 15 minus 6, which is equal to negative 21. So when x is negative 3, y is negative 21 so that's going to be negative 3 negative 21 that's going to be another solution right these are these are points on the uh, xy plane where the graphs of these two functions intersect that's what uh, it means uh, intuitively and then when x is 2 you get y equals 5 times 2 minus 6 this is going to be 10 minus 6 which is 4 so we have 2 comma 4. And so that would be our other solution. So we have three solutions. There are three points of intersection uh, on the graphs of these two functions where we have some cubic polynomial and the line. And basically we're being asked, where does the cubic polynomial and the line you know, intersect? And we found the points of intersection. Or equivalently, solve the system of nonlinear equations. Same thing. I hope this has been helpful. Good luck.